All right. Good afternoon, everybody. We're here today to talk talk about the West Haymarket JPA and a couple of items that uh, uh, will be on a future agenda for action. Uh, it's a, a bit of an unusual situation, technically this morning, as well as a press conference. This is a special meeting of the West Haymarket JPA. A copy of the open meetings law is in the back of the room. The agenda uh, today is simply to better inform the public about two items that will be on the JPA's uh, December 27th public meeting agenda. Uh, no action will be taken today whatsoever. Uh, and with respect to the December 27th meeting, uh, we all who are here today on the board have not thoroughly uh, discussed whether final action will be on the 27th or we will delay and give more time to the public to respond and act on the matter at an ensuing meeting. We want to be sure that the extra transparency that we're providing today is perceived as uh, extra transparency. Uh, but these are important items, so we wanted to get uh, in front of them and be sure the public uh, had uh, could identify the issues. I'm joined this morning by the other two members of the West Haymarket JPA, City Council Member Carl Eskridge and uh, NU Regent Tim Clare. We thank you all for coming, and we will take public questions and comments. Uh, at the end of our remarks, each of us is making a set of short remarks, uh, and then the public is invited to uh, participate. Let me start, uh, and let me start with a flat-out statement that's pretty broad, but I don't think anybody can deny. The success of Pinnacle Bank Arena in the West Haymarket area has exceeded all of our expectations. And we're excited to share with the public information about two projects that could help us complete what was envisioned when we planned and built the arena and the West Haymarket. Community leaders saw the arena as the north anchor of the development. And at the south end, they saw a capstone project that would provide a park, a plaza, and trail hub for the new residents of the area. It was also envisioned as a catalyst for redevelopment of the South Haymarket, south of N Street. The two projects we will discuss today help us realize that complete vision. First, the JPA is proposing to purchase the former Jacobson Cold Storage property on the southwest corner of 7th and N Street for slightly over $2 million. This property at the end of Canopy Street, at the south end of Canopy Street, would make possible the new park and plaza and is a key part of creating a public-private partnership to support the, the anticipated surrounding development. The second proposal is to sell to WRK the half block at Canopy and Q Streets, just north of Huddle's new headquarters for $1.55 million. WRK would build a new mixed-use building at that site. WRK has previously partnered with Speedway and Nelnet to construct the Huddle Building, as you may recall. Uh, and they have consistently uh, demonstrated their ability to design and to construct high-quality buildings and to fill those buildings throughout the downtown and the Haymarket. With this new project, all three blocks immediately south of the arena would be built out with a vibrant array of housing and offices and retail and other uses. Together, these two projects represent the continuation of the successful West Haymarket build out and a crucial first step for the future of the area south of N Street. The two projects, the purchase and the sale will be on the JPA's agenda for our next meeting, Thursday, December 27th. That meeting starts at 2.30 p.m. in the City Council Chambers. 
We will conduct a public hearing on both issues at that meeting. As I indicated earlier, that could be further extended. We also want to encourage the public to give us now their input through emails and letters. Carl and Tim are going to share some information about these projects and how they fit into the larger history and vision of downtown, the historic Haymarket, and the new West Haymarket. So with that, Carl's going to start with some details on the Park and Plaza project. Carl? Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor Beitler and Regent Clare, uh, for your leadership with the JPA from the very beginning. In addition to serving with you for these four years that I've been the council's representative on the JPA, I also am a resident of downtown Lincoln and have found uh, firsthand that the experience of living downtown is tremendous. Downtown Lincoln is a great place to live, work, and play. In recent years, we've seen amazing growth with new public and private investment in our infrastructure and new buildings and renovations of existing buildings and spaces. Downtown Lincoln's growth has been guided by a series of public approved downtown master plans. Before they became a reality, the Arena and West Haymarket development, the N Street Bikeway, the P Street Retail Corridor, and the Lincoln Community Foundation Tower Square were all a part of the vision that was laid out in the 2005 and 2012 master plans. For decades, our community has used these plans to articulate public-private visions for our downtown. And how is it growing? From Antelope Valley to the east, to the west Haymarket to the west, downtown Lincoln is twice the size it was a decade ago. Since January, about 2,000 residents have given their input into the new downtown master plan. And last night, council gave the 2018 plan its unanimous approval. So we now have a new plan to guide public and private investments, making downtown Lincoln one of the region's premier urban neighborhoods. This plan outlines eight specific catalyst projects to support downtown as the center of opportunity by spurring redevelopment, stimulating economic growth, and enhancing cultural amenities. The purchase of the property at 7th and N Streets will help us to jumpstart the first of those catalyst projects, the signature urban park, plaza, and trail connection. Great cities have great downtown public spaces, including parks. The public has told us that playground space, a dog park, festival space, play courts, and other amenities for downtown residents and workers are important. A new downtown public plaza on the south end of Canopy Street will also provide gathering spaces for dining, music, and other activities. Furthermore, this park will have an important trail connection between N and J Streets providing a vital link between the Haymarket and the overall trail system to the south, including a link to Pioneers Park and the proposed tra uh, Prairie Trail. As Mayor Beitler has said, this public space will help to energize private development in the surrounding area. You know, public-private partnerships have been a critical reason for why Lincoln has experienced remarkable growth. Less than eight years ago, public and private leaders were standing on a dusty field approximately where the Amtrak station is today. They were there to turn dirt in an unseen development. At that time, the West Haymarket area was empty. Look at it now. The amount of investment and the resulting payoff to the community has been incredible. Tim is going to tell us a little more about the history of what has gone on in the West Haymarket and more specifically about the project at Canopy and Q. Tim. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Carl. And you're exactly right about the success that we've seen over the last 10 years and know that all three of us who serve on the joint public agency are very proud of the, the success of the public and private development that has transpired during that time period. 
The original West Haymarket was envisioned and expected uh, as an entertainment district with new urban residences, a hub for our young entrepreneurs and new jobs with the arena on the north end and the park on the south end. Um, but what we didn't expect was the rapid pace of development. The voters deserve credit for approving the arena project, but we also need to recognize the many private investors that, and developers who partnered with us and continue to partner with us to make this dream a reality. Let's take a minute and recall what has happened in just the last few years. We can start with the Vision 2015 group and their leadership in, in outlining what, what this park would, or what this uh, development would, uh, would look like to start with. Certainly there's been variations to that, but uh, uh, without their leadership, we wouldn't be here today. WRK headed by Will and Robert Scott brought us the Hyatt Place uh, block and the rail yard, which led to the creation of the state's first entertainment district. Our vision of a hub for homegrown tech jobs uh, is happening thanks to entrepreneurs like David Graff, Brian Kaiser, John Wirtz, all three University of Nebraska-Lincoln graduates who founded Huddle. And with the help of Nelnet, WRK, Speedway, uh, Speedway, uh, the development, um, they chose to build a world-class headquarters in the new West Haymarket. This is exactly the type of workforce development activity that we envision for our city. The university produces about 11,000 graduates for workforce every year. The University Saturday, in fact, just graduated another 1,500 students. Our best and brightest talent should be staying right here in Lincoln, right here in Nebraska after they graduate, so that they can grow the high skill, high demand, high wage jobs that are key to our prosperity. Developments like the West Haymarket will keep talent here. Across the street from Huddle is the headquarters of Olson, one of Lincoln's and Nebraska's and national long established consulting firms. Olson is now putting up a companion building on the south half of their block. That kind of leadership and confidence is a big reason the area is thriving and building out way ahead of schedule. We have a new urban living options with the Lumberworks lofts. Speedway's project also includes a long awaited grocery store downtown. Thanks to, again, Speedway, Nelnet, U-Stop, there's been tremendous partnering opportunities that have resulted in, in the success of this development. And we can't be more thankful than we are for, the, for those partnerships. There are many other investors and developers who help build the area. None of this would happen without that vision, that leadership, and that hard work of the businesses and entrepreneurs who brought this amazing plan to life. The West Haymarket JPA plays a significant role in determining what's next. The JPA already owns the majority of the new park, plaza, trail, and redevelopment area. The purchase of the Jacobson property would complete that vision. As members of the JPA, we take very seriously our duty to ensure that we have the budget to complete the West Haymarket build out. At the same time, we have an obligation to make sure that our community is receiving good value from the JPA's investment. That's why we, care, we are carefully reviewing the proposals, the purchase of the Jacobson property, and the sale of the, north, of, the, of the property north of the Huddle Building. We're taking that very seriously. And as the mayor spoke earlier, we're also, we also want to make sure that transparency and the opportunity for the public to comment and, and, and look at these proposals and look at what we're, we're proposing to do we're looking at, we're, we're going to consider strongly whether that's, that vote on the 27th is deferred another week or, or more. We want, this was a public project to start with. We want to keep it that way to make the public continue to be proud of the development. Real estate prices can vary widely depending on location, timing, access, improvements, and other factors. Property in the Haymarket area has sold as low as $15 a square foot and as high as over $100 a square foot. The price of the Jacobs, Jacobson property is on the higher end of that scale. As always, our job is to determine if the purchase price provides sufficient value to the community. Similarly, the sale of the property at, at Canopy and Q would return $1.5 million to the JPA and lead to new construction and new private sector investment that creates jobs 
and builds our local economy. It's been exciting to serve on the JPA board and watch the West Haymarket build out and create a positive impact on downtown and the entire community. We are all eager to continue this work in partnership with the private sector. And again, we encourage your comments and your participation and involvement. Mayor Beitler. Tim, thank you for your comments and thank you for being with us from the very beginning. So My privilege. It's, it's been a great partnership altogether. Uh, I think all three of us are <laughs> excited about the, uh, about the future. Uh, first, a reminder that we do, in fact, want to hear from the public. That opportunity is today. That opportunity is December 27th. That opportunity may be even later if it's further uh, postponed. Uh, but there will be plenty of opportunities to discuss the purchase and the sale. Second, the new downtown master plan includes some conceptual drawings of the park project. It's now time to create a more concrete plan and we will contract with a planning and design firm to help us with that. The firm will create a layout of the park, the trail, the plaza, and private development opportunities. The design will support the goals of the downtown master plan and identify costs and potential funding opportunities to build the park and the plaza and the trail. Working with area property owners will be an essential part of the process. The city will fund the design study since the future park and plaza will likely be owned and maintained by our parks and recreation department. Tim and Carl and I are committed to making sure that the West Haymarket build out continues to be successful. We have found our past successes as Tim indicated through public private partnerships and that is the model that we feel will continue to be the best way to meet our community vision. We also know that that model works best with community input. So we look forward to hearing from the public on these two exciting proposals. So with that, we'll take input from the public and today let me divide that into two parts. Are there any members of the public other than the media who wish to uh, make a statement or ask questions with regard to what was said this morning. Seeing none, we'll move on to the media and, and afford them the opportunity to uh, ask questions. Uh, and Lynn Johnson and Chris Connolly, uh, Chris Connolly from our law department, Lynn Johnson from our parks and rec department are here uh, to lend their expertise to the occasion. So, have at it. Are there any more details on what the BRP is planning in, in terms of timeline and what they Yeah, it, 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 they have not been uh, specific with regard to tenants or uses. Uh, but there's been considerable conversation about the structure of the building that they will be putting in place and, uh, uh, and the fact that it should relate to the huddle building. Uh, so uh, there will be agreements in place with regard to some uh, uh, types of uses and design. Uh, but it's still wide open with regard to uh, their, their clientele. So when you say mixed use, are you talking office and retail? Uh, is there any residential involved? Or? Yeah, traditionally in the Haymarket area, we've made a point of requiring retail on the first floor uh, to some extent, differing uh, requirements in different uh, sectors of the West Haymarket. We try to get mixed use down there. Uh, we're trying to get living quarters down there, office space if it's needed. Uh, we generally give great leeway to the public sector to figure out what combination of things uh, makes the greatest sense. And there's been no discussion at this point uh, about the nature of the mixed use.
Oh, okay. You all good to go? Like, uh, I, I've got a couple more questions, I'm sorry. Is that likely to be a TIF project then? It's likely to be a TIF project. Okay. And then the other question. And I, and I say that because the pattern uh, of development in the area uh, has been a partnership that's uh, allowed great advantage down there. Right. And then I just have one more question for you. Have appraisals already been done on the properties? On the properties? Yeah, the, the yes. The properties you're buying, the property that you're selling. And are they being sold and bought for roughly appraised value? Uh, Chris, do you have exact figures on that? I. I I do have, uh, we have one appraisal completed, the other one is not yet completed. Why don't you talk into the microphone? This is Chris Connolly with our law department. We do have the appraisal completed with regard to the Block 2 property, the property that's being sold to WRK. Um, and um, what I would, the, the agreement will be out on Friday, or Thursday, when the agenda is posted and the documents will be available. In terms of the appraisal for that property, um, we probably won't actually release it until later. What I would tell you, though, is that there were a number of negotiations that go into um, what the sale price is going to be, and so um, it may or may not be reflective of what's actually in the appraisal. Yeah, the only reason I ask is the, and I know the assessed value is not the same as market value, but the assessed value on the tunnel or the West Bay market lot one is almost a million dollars, and it's doubled in three years. And the value on the property you're buying is like seven hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. So I was just curious because there's a higher purchase price than there is selling price on properties that appear to be switched in terms of value. Well, in and in terms of the again, there were a lot of negotiations in it. It's it's difficult to lay it all out now. Um, but um, certainly after the agreements are released uh, as part of the agenda on Thursday. Um, I'll be happy to visit with you and, and go over more of the details of, of what's in the agreements, uh, including the, the prices that are listed in there. All right, are we good to go? Thank you very much.